So I'm Mark Robinson. Welcome to First Fridays, and I hope you'll enjoy my artwork. If you you send a question during this, and I answer it, and every every question I answer, we'll put it in a thing and draw it. And, and so you'll have to come and pick it up, though, because we're not going to ship it to anybody. So if anybody's out of town, you'll have to figure a way to get it. For me. As far as I remember, I've always been interested in art. So I. I have, uh, my dad was a, a part-time artist, and I have a grandmother that was a full-time artist that was a, they had a shop in Oakland that's called the Hidden Art Shop. She did oil paintings and watercolors and, and china painting. So, so I've always, I always drew and... My dad taught me how to wood carve. He'd, he'd carve wood. He'd made some wood tikis and, and some other things, and so I learned carving from him. I got tools from him. I got tools from my grandmother, a little carving set from her, because she carved things, you know, that then she painted. So and I got a couple of those, uh, at least one example of that. In high school, I took art. And in junior college, I took art. And, and at Stanislaus State, I also did some art. In terms of uh, granite carving, I didn't start that until I got a job at uh, Visalia Granite and Marble here in Visalia. With the lockdown, I was on disability for four months because of back surgery in January, so I I was home anyway, you know, but I got, and it, I couldn't do a lot of art the first month or two, but as I got stronger and all that, my back felt better. I, I was out my studio every day carving, so I, and I, I was trying to get ready for the art tour, you know, the South County art tour. So just to create helps your mood. I don't have a deep philosophy on, on art. I just do it. So I'm more in the tiki movement from the 50s and 60s. It's things like that that I like. And, and obviously I'm wearing a shirt that, uh, from the tiki room in Disneyland. So those are the kind of things I like, the fun side of Tiki. Some people take Tiki really seriously and some people off the other end, which is not even Tiki, but yeah. The owner of the business, Ron Westbrook, and I went to Georgia in 2006 it was for monument builders to show different ways you could work on scrap pieces and stuff and turn trash into money. And so that was called Block Camp. And so we took a, a three-day class where we, we went with nothing and no experience and ended up buying a bunch of tools and stuff. And, and so we carved granite. There was different things we were, we were doing, but I, I carved uh, uh, a, a tall man out of it and, and some hands holding the rock. And draw, figure drawing, painting you know, whatever class I took at the time. A little bit of sculpt, a little bit of clay stuff. So on this one, it's kind of kind of an abstract painting that I did over a period of time where I was painting something else and I would use paint up on this, so. I mean, I have some wood carvings at home that I did as a teenager. And then I have drawings that I did of, of, of people, you know, of my dad and, and stuff, and those are all very special to me, so still, I've been making awards. So I did t-shirts for 15 or 20 years, and then I got out of that business. And so in the last 15 and 20, I've been making awards. So I make granite or metal awards. You just have to put yourself out there. So with, with, with the different medias and all that that you could use, you could show a lot of people your art. So I think you just have to put yourself out there and just create art for for art for your sake. I you know you, you don't have to create it for other people. You create it for and then you just hope that other people like your stuff. And so that's where I'm coming from. You know I don't if somebody tells me something that they like and then maybe I'll do that and if I like it I'll do more. But you know if if but I like to do it for myself first. You know, I, I talk to my wife all the time about art and, and how it should be going. So if I have an idea, I 
bounce it off of her and, and you know or bounce off of other people and that's a, so you just bounce things off of people and then you just make art so my problem is that i haven't made enough as much art as i thought i should have by this time the one here is, is a picture of bill anderson he was what i would like to say the babe ruth of highland games he was from, from scotland he won the world championship you know seven or eight times and things so so i i originally did that it's all pen and ink this is a print of my original drawing and then it was watercolor we gave him a copy of this a few years ago and, and then a few other people have prints of this he enjoyed the picture the thing he bill passed away i think last year at something so a lot of people don't know what highland games is first of all Highland Games are, well, the Highland Heavy Athletics are people throwing heavy things. So usually you wear a kilt. You, you start out in different classes and work your way up. And then there's professional classes, and there's still a bunch out there. And, and so you, and typically you throw a 56-pound weight for distance and height. You throw a 22-pound hammer and a 16-pound hammer for distance. You throw a caber, which is like a, a telephone pole for accuracy so usually it's any depending on on your class and all that but i've thrown up to uh, 18 feet 130 pound cavers so you have to they stand it up for you and then you have to bend down and pick it up off the ground and then you run with it and you have to stop and throw it so the end that you're holding will land at 12 o'clock so it has to turn all the way over. So it's fun. I felt that, you know, in drawing, sometimes I was too stiff and in granite carving, I was much freer to do what I wanted to do and, and it didn't necessarily have to be perfect. I like it because there's not, not everybody is doing it. So everybody draws and paints and everything, but there's not very many stone or carvers in that area. So I really enjoy doing something different. And, and it's much more permanent than other things. The, the, my carbon should be around for, for a long time. Well, I, there's really talented people in Tulare County. And I've seen that by going to the different tours and all that. And I need to sell my artwork. I, I only do the Taste of the Arts and the Studio Tour right now. You know, people appreciate art here. People love art and people are incredibly talented in Tulare County. So my grandmother and my dad were my favorite artists too. In the Studio Tour, I always have my grandmother and my dad's work. I put off commissions, and but I'm going to retire in January, so I'll be more open to commissions then. I have more time. It's hard to work 40, 40 50 hours a week and, and still do commissions. So, and then my wife thinks I should be doing a lot more work around the house too. So August first, so we're going. To, I'm going to have my studio open for anybody that wants to come see it. So I will have signs up on the highway so if you're heading towards three rivers you'll see a sign they'll say stone car carving and just follow the signs so it's august 1st between nine to five or six and it's just that one day only on a saturday so if you're out come and see us i'm on facebook i i have a page i have an artist page Mark Joseph Robinson, Stone Carving and Designs. <laughs> so here I'm, I'm taking a five inch diamond blade and making cuts at an angle on, on this sculpture here. So I'm carving this area here. So that so I'm just holding the grinder at different angles to make different cuts, and then taking away the polish. So I'm also holding with two hands because I'm trying not to. 
I'm trying to guide it the way I want. So you, you have to also watch that you don't put your hand near the blade because it will hurt. So now I'm cut, I'm just cutting a different angle and, and to, to get kind of a form of a, of a plant type thing. So I go back and forth and so I'm trying to make it deeper. And uh, so I'm going to go off the stone here. And so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to round it too to make it right. So, so here we're, we're still grinding and, and I'm hitting it flat. And where my uh, my protective gear, which is a, a 3M product that has an air pack and it sends air into your face. So we're in gloves. And so the dust is being put away because I have a fan on in the background too. So granite dust isn't the safest thing to breathe because it has a lot of silk in it so here i'm just i'm just shaping with a with a flat grinder and we'll get into some other stuff here in a little while so now i'm cutting i know here's I'm still cutting a curve on the second leaf up here so i always worry about my beard hanging out too I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I have to make sure I don't cut it off you know, <laughs> with a grinder. So as I get older, I, I feel it more in the hands too, the, the you know, a little bit of arthritis and stuff like that. So I know that sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll be shaking my hands to, to get them to feel better. So now I'm just try, making the hole a little bigger and a little deeper. So it, it's a gradual thing with granite. You don't you don't want to go really deep on the first cut. You kind of just let it come, let it. Uh, so here's I'm going to cut a, another side of this other part here. This the concave leaf. <clears throat> so I'm just using the grind, grinder to cut different angles in the, the granite. So we're, we're just getting deeper. I usually don't wear a, a collared shirt when I'm carving either. So I'm just going to go up and around and making that that curve right there and then cut it out. So I'm wearing ear protection and hand protection. And, on her way. So I'm, I'm just nibbling off and trying to round it off is, is, is most of the things I'm doing here. The, I made cuts at an angle on the top and I'll be breaking that away with a chisel here in a little while. So I, you know, you, you kind of use the grinder to scoop material away too. And while you're doing this, there's dust flying all over the place. So that's where wearing this helmet is much easier than wearing goggles and other respirators. I don't know how much you want me to keep talking, but <clears throat> so I do something. What's that? You can say as much as you want. Yeah, I'm just. You can fast forward it too if you want. Oh, uh, I'm just watching it. <laughs> okay, cool. I don't know how much you. You know, it's we're we're doing. I'm doing curves and stuff, so I'm, I'm leaving that space in the middle where I'm going to do a rock pitch. It's all organic right here. There's no, as, I, as I'm cutting, that's what I'm thinking. I don't pre-think what I'm doing. I mean, when I, I did do a, a couple of cuts before you got there, but, but as I'm doing it, I'm just thinking. So now I'm making straight cuts that are going to end up being rock pitched to give it a different texture. So I'm looking for text. I do a lot of nature stuff, so like dragonflies, and and I've done hummingbirds. And so I, if I do one, sometimes I'll do ten. You know, I'll do a bunch of different things and different sizes and different colors. So 
you know, it's, it's, uh, but there's a lot of things going through my mind all the time of what I want to do. And, and sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. I, I had, I have one that I was starting to work on a polar bear, you know, but the, so I try to change it up a lot. So sometimes I'll do tiki, sometimes I'll do abstract, sometimes I'll do figurative. So it, it, it's not always one thing. I like to have a wide variety of because a lot of people like different things. And then I'll listen to my customers of what they like and, and I'll have more of those because you know I have a lot of people that want crosses and stuff like that. So I'll do those and I'll sell those pretty well. The challenge in stone at first was the tools. So if I and I didn't know all the right tools and, and things. So I always look for something to make my job easier so a better diamond a better chisel or something like that so my first sculptures weren't that great because they, i didn't have all the right tools so as tools make things easier it makes it faster and then i have to stretch the limit of those tools sometimes without hurting anybody <laughs> and myself so I, I i'm pretty hard on my my grinders and stuff and, and i've burned a few up over the years, but, but you know, it, it, the end result is usually good for it. So, my pieces have gone from you know, palm size to truck size almost, you know, things that I can't lift myself anymore. So, it's getting the granite sometimes that big, and a lot of times I don't have a lot of sources for big granite. So, but I'm, I'm also looking at taking bigger size pieces and adding more pieces to it to make a bigger sculpture. So that's, those are the kind of things I want to get into too, is maybe stacked or something, you know, a big wall of granite. So showing the line, I cut lines in and now I'm going to take a hammer and chisel and break them. And, and granite breaks really nicely. And, and that, gives it a whole another texture and I really like it and I do a lot of that in my sculptures. The challenge in stone at first was the tools. So if I, and I didn't know all the right tools and, and things. So I always look for something to make my job easier. So a better diamond, a better chisel or something like that. So my first sculptures weren't that great because they, I didn't have all the right tools. So as tools make things easier, it makes it faster. And then I have to stretch the limit of those tools sometimes without hurting anybody <laughs> and myself. So I, I, I'm pretty hard on my, my grinders and stuff. And I've burned a few up over the years. But, but you know, I, it, the end result is usually good for it. So I didn't leave any polish on it. You know, because you know, some because sometimes you have to think ahead of that, and I didn't. So, so it's a small piece. Like I, you know, and then I, I, I showed different textures later, and I don't necessarily know if I kept them. You know, because uh, after you left, I, I, I did some more to it. Well, actually, I rested for a while and then came back. <laughs> and and so you know, it, so. Yeah, it's basically taking that, that diamond and moving it around and getting the shape you want. So you have to, sometimes when, you, when you're cutting, you, you cut things too deep and it breaks off. So you'll see pieces flying here and there. And, and, and so you're also trying to get a straight blade and you know, I'm trying to make a curve. So that's, that's a little tricky at times. And then so at, so I do smaller blades to make tighter cuts. So I also have bigger blades to make deeper cuts. So you have to keep using different tools. And yes, I buy a lot of tools. My my wife says, well, if God needs a tool, she jumps and ask me. But you know, I don't think it's true. But, but I'm always looking to see. Well, how can I do that easier? How can it thing? So, yeah, and these these tools when I first started buying them, you know, one of those discs was like one hundred twenty dollars. But I've been able to find 
similar ones for, direct from China for you know a third of the cost or a quarter of the cost of that. And they might not last as long, but but they work good for a while, you know. And and so you always have to check those tools because they're they're screwed on. So you if they start becoming loose, you need to fix you need to stop using that grinder and either change blades or tighten it down. And then at a certain point you don't want to um, you want you don't want to overheat the, the grinder too. Most of my abstract pieces or or even some of the other ones just to give it a different look. So I'm gonna go on either side of that cut and break it away and it, it's called kind of a starburst pattern or sun pattern, so make it a, a, a point. So I'm gonna break off both things to make it a point, and then break that and make it curve a little bit. So this this will just, I'm holding the chisel different ways, and I really notice my hands sometimes doing this, that they, they cramp up and they hurt. So, and I had been, I had done a bunch the day before and I did this on another piece. So, I'm pretty fast at this. Well, some people aren't. You know, they'll take their time more. I'm. I don't think I can make a mistake, and I try not to. So it, it's because it's really subjective on how what it looks like. It just, you know, people don't know what it takes to get that way. But it looks really good, and, and it's just a bunch of breaking it away and there's a bunch of other ones there that I've done a lot too and so I don't know how else to describe it all right so this is a <clears throat> this is a pneumatic hammer they've made these for 100, over 100 years and I and a couple I have that might be close to that old I'm not sure but there's they have different tips for them and uh and different sizes, and, and there's a company, there's an Italian company that makes them. I don't have any of theirs, but but company back in, in the East Coast has, has them. So, so basically, there's different bits or different chisels to use. So, I like to use a nine point and a sixteen point uh, bushing hammers. There. And they, so they, they give great textures. You can round off with them, and and you could also remove um, granite with them. And they also I, you, you also get they also have different points that you can smooth out with, and you can break with. So there's a lot. I have a, a whole drawer full. It's when I go to the to the school of hard rock, they have. We get to go to a tool company, and so they have this what we call the candy shop. So they have all these things that you know you just pick what you want, and they give us a good price. So when I go there, I usually spend you know a few hundred to five hundred dollars on tools. Because <laughs> if I order them through the thing, it costs me twice as much sometimes. So here I'm just taking a. Uh, I believe well, I went to a smaller nine point and, and I'm just trying to turn that corner trying to make it curve it's just another way to do it and and with the pneumatic hammer and for so on the grinder it's a round thing so you can't it's hard to get into corners but with a pneumatic hammer you can get into corners you can make things square so a lot of times you'll be doing if you're doing a corner You'll be getting like a little pyramid type thing there, so you'll have to use a matic hammer <coughs> to flatten that down. So on my bird bath, I had to do that a bunch and some other stuff. So so this is just an pneumatic, and this is a small nine point. They have a sixteen point that that you, it does it doesn't take as much off, so you're just taking a little bit off at a time. So it basically, just goes up and down, up and down, and you have to hold. So if I take if I lift it up, that hammer will fall out, the chisel will fall out. So you have to hold on to it at the same time. So that's, and, and I like to uh, 
sculpt with with that with the hammer a lot. It's really it's fun, and but it's hard on your hands too. So I think I've finished with this part. So maybe the horse can't. No, the horse. The gates fall open. Oh, okay. All right. So then, what I grabbed is some rotary tools. So there's a Dremel. Everybody knows what a Dremel is. So a Dremel will hold a thin shaft, and you could buy a bunch of different diamonds for it. And then the other one I have is a quarter inch shaft. And it's a die grinder, and I see the horse coming. So, so I know that I, I so. so I'm putting back on my air protection, so I'm going to put my helmet on. So, because this is dusty too, so it's it's so they're bits, and they they're full of diamonds, and they're not. I try not to use electroplated ones because they'll they chip a lot. So this one's this one I'm using right now. I've been using for a while. I haven't even taken it off that that die grinder. I use it for everything. And it was a really expensive bit. That one cost close to hundred dollars for just that little bit. But it's 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 the diamonds are embedded in it. So you'll as you wear it down, more diamonds are in it. So and you, you basically just use it to round off and, and do different things. So yeah, I'm, I'm just digging into that little part and rounding off, and trying to take off the polish and rounding it off because. Here I'm just trying trying to take off the polish and, and rounding the top. Yeah, so it's just all diamond, all die grinding work, just to show the different tools I use. And I think here comes the, the horses in my studio, so I'll take things off and shoe them out. <laughs> so that's Stormy or Storm, the Wonder Horse. So here I'm just showing you a, a, a sanding. Thanks for hanging around on this July 3rd, and, and everybody have a good 4th. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel here. Keep all your dogs safe, and we'll see you later. Oh, and make sure you come and see my studio on August 1st. All right, thank you.